At this point, I want to put together two things you understand individually, but together might hurt your head a little bit. Previously, we looked at code like this. Button tap me, background blue, frame width 200, height 200, foreground color white. And we looked at how that kind of code would look different if we'd put the frame modifier before the background. Because now the background occupies the full space of the frame rather than being tightly around the text. So it's simply because if we color the background before adjusting the frame, only the original space of the text area is colored rather than the expanded space. And if you recall, the underlying reason for this is because SwiftUI wraps views with modifiers as we apply them, allowing us to apply the same modifier several times. You know, we, we tried repeating background and padding, if you remember, to create a sort of striped border effect. That's concept one. Modifier order matters because SwiftUI wraps views with modifiers in the order they are applied. Concept two is that we can apply an animation modifier to a view in order to, it to have an implicit animation when some state changes. To demonstrate this, we could modify our button code. So we have uh, a simple Boolean up here. Let's say enabled is false. And then toggle the value into the button's action, enabled.toggle. Now we'll apply a conditional modifier here to background. We'll say if enabled is true, then use dot blue, otherwise use dot red. And finally, we're gonna add the animation modifier to the button, so these changes animate smoothly. So I'll say animation dot default, default with an A ideally, there we go, value of enabled, like that. And as you run the code, you'll see the button, when it's tapped, will animate its color between red and blue, like this exactly as you'd expect. So, the modifier order matters. And we can attach one modifier several times to a view. Plus, we can cause implicit mod animations to occur with the animation modifier. All clear so far? All being well? Right, brace yourself because this might hurt a little bit. You can attach the animation modifier several times and the order in which you apply it matters. To demonstrate this, I want you to apply a new modifier to our view that applies a clip shape, doing it after all the other modifiers so far. So after animation, we'll say clip shape, I'll do a rounded rectangle with corner radius. If enabled is true, radius 60, otherwise radius zero. I'm going to cause the button to move between a square shape and a rounded rectangle shape, depending on the state of our enabled Boolean. Now, when you run this program, you will see, hopefully, tapping the button will still move between blue and red with animation. But the clip shape changes immediately. That part does not animate. Hopefully, you can see where we're going next. I'd like you to move the clip shape modifier before the animation like that. Small change. But now when you run the code again, you will see clip shape also animates at the same time as changing color. So the order we apply animations matters. Only changes that occur before the animation modifier get animated. Now for the fun part. If we apply multiple animation modifiers to our view, each one controls everything before it up to the next animation. And that'll then take over control. This allows us to animate status changes in all sorts of interesting different ways rather than being uniform for all properties. For example, we could make our color change up here happen with a default animation. So I'll say our background enabled blue and red with animation.default and value to watch is enabled then clip shapes can change as well, but that I want to animate, not with the default animation, but instead with uh, interpolating spring, stiffness 10, damping one. And now I'll have two different animations, a smooth color change, but a bouncing clip shape change, like this. Boom. 
You can have as many animation modifiers as you want to construct the exact design you're trying to achieve. It just lets us split up state changes into as many segments as we want, which is really, really nice. For even more control, it's possible to pass in nil to the animation modifier, which means disable animations entirely until I tell you otherwise. For example, you might want to say uh, the color change should change immediately. That's just immediate. So I'll use nil here rather than default. But the clip shape, yeah, you stay as interpolating spring. That's fine. And now we'll play it back again. You'll see it snap from blue to red and vice versa. But the color change, uh, the, the, the clip shape will animate with its spring like that. Brilliant. And this kind of control would simply not be possible without multiple animation modifiers. You know, if you, if you try to move background after the animation, you'd find it would just undo the work of the clip shape because you're, you're clipping to a shape and then coloring the whole thing again with a new background. So it'd get very, very confused. 